Thanks, Rail Gormd. Let's just uh, talk a little bit about advice for starting out as a young attending, finishing up fellowship and starting out as an attending. What are some things to look out for? I think kind of, I'll get right to the point. I think one of the biggest things to, you know, be a little bit concerned about as you come out as an attending is managing that aggressivity, that aggressivity that comes from the fellowship. Um, basically, you complete a year of fellowship, you do so many cases, right? You do people doing 1,200, 1,500 cases, sometimes 2,000 cases. You do all these cases and you have all this knowledge and you have all this ability and you're so so ready to put that into practice, um, you really develop this aggression. And I know it was present for me. I know it was present for many others that I know. And you basically come out of fellowship and you're just wanting to bust out into the real world and really just use your skills. You just want to just unleash. You just want to unleash. You're like a, a dog that's been let off the leash, a beast that's been let out the cage. And you just want to use those skills. You want to go after the biggest, baddest cases and just start doing them. The truth is you have to be really careful because that energy can really backfire on you. In fact, you have to learn to tame that. That's really the goal of that first year out, the first two years out. You gotta tame that aggressivity and learn how to manage it and control it because it can really hurt you. You do not wanna get out and start doing big uh, risky cases. It's not a good way to start out because um, what you didn't realize was that back when you work with that attending, the attending knew how to manage people's expectations. They knew how to control narratives. They knew how to make it so that everybody was on the same page so that whatever happened to that patient, whether it was good or bad, it was in line with the overall narrative of that institution of that, uh, at that time period, at that point in time. You don't know how to do that yet. You have some technical skills. You know how to thrombectomize. You know how to use a balloon. You know how to drop, drop a stent. But you don't know how to control the narrative. And things happen. Um, Unfortunately, with procedures, things happen. It is inevitable. And if you get out there, start doing big cases, uh, going after cases aggressively, doing big cases, you're going to fall. And in the beginning, it's, it's going to look poorly on you. So you have to learn to manage that. What should you do? What you should do is just focus on cases that you know how to do. Uh, show them that you're a safe, effective team player. You know, Focus on things like perm cats and G2s. You know, show them that you can do a flawless perm cath. Uh, show them that you can do a straightforward G tube, you know, with no problems. You know, uh, show them that you can do paras and thoras and biopsies. You know, just focus on nice, straightforward cases that you know how to do. Show them that you're safe. Show them that you're effective. Show them that you're nice, that you're affable, and just and just show them the quality. Show them that you're a trained professional. You know what you're doing, and and those cases that you're desiring will come. They will come. You will have your opportunity. Um, you want to ask questions. You want to work with people that have been doing it longer than you. They just gonna know something. I know myself after doing this for about four years There's certain things I know that I just had no idea about until I was practicing on my own and um, I know all my mistakes. I know all the mistakes I've made up to this point And if you talk to someone that's has more experience than you, you're gonna get some of those uh, Some of those piece of information you need Don't be so much of a disruptor. You don't realize what what you're working in and where you're going uh, you've been working probably in a very advanced uh, academic medical center. Maybe it's 500 beds, maybe it's 600 beds, it might be 1,000 beds. You're working in a large bed size academic hospital, probably has a trauma center, probably has a, a liver transplant center, um, probably has a cancer center. And uh, <clears throat> this has been feeding you with so many high level IR cases that you just feel very confident working in that, in that system. Um, You've probably been working with coordinators that know how to uh, maximize rooms and they know how to fill five rooms up with 10 cases each and pound out 50 cases a day. And now you're gonna go to a different place. You're gonna go to maybe a 100 bed hospital, maybe two hours driving distance of a major city. They needed IR covers, they got you. You signed the contract, you're there now. You're at a 100 bed hospital. There's no cancer center. They don't do trauma, right? You're doing basic stuff. Um, they aren't used to a high, high level practice. They, their, their way of practicing might be 20 years old, you know, based on what you think. Don't go around trying to tell people what they're doing wrong. It's just not gonna work out. Uh, you have to learn to go with the flow. Uh, one, of the, one of the worst parts of IR, being an IR attending, is sometimes there's no cases to do and you have to sit there and deal with that. And don't be afraid to, to start reading a couple diagnostic cases in that downtime. 
Uh, that's just how it goes. Um, that is one of the truths about IR, probably not frequently discussed, is that there will be days when there's no cases. You're at a hospital, there's no IR cases, and you got to find something else to do. Maybe round on patients, uh, maybe hit the list. That's what I've been doing, I have done. Uh, go with the flow. Uh, don't, uh, don't disrupt. Try to smoothly enter and, and slowly change things. Change has to be slow. Uh, change has to feel like the other person wants it. Not that you're trying to push it down their throats. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, get out there. Enjoy. Have fun. Save lives. You will be saving lives, no doubt. Uh, control your aggressivity and learn to go with the flow and just accept the situation that you're in and, and enjoy. You know, try to uh, basically you're 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 taking in the value of that education. You know, as you start, try to enjoy that. So I'm going to do.